lunchtime again. Let me tell you something. Things have been getting pretty wild and eh, that's okay. It is what it is. We all do what we do. It isn't even what you think. Just because you looked at the thumbnail, you already had a preconceived notion of what I was going to say. You're wrong. Here's the thing. A while back last year, I got a ticket. <laughs> Moving violation ticket, two points, no good. Uh, I can't afford that. Anyway, the cop knew he was wrong. There was nothing I could do except take it to court. So, you know, normally when you had a point ticket and you're risking losing your license, people get lawyers and things like that. And that's what you're supposed to do. And that's what I would do if I was wrong. My, said, my girl said, leave it in God's hands. Do what you got to do. And I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to get this dismissed one way or the other. All right. No problem. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go in there and state our case and do what we must do. And we're going to get it dismissed. Long story short, I go into court waiting for the officer because this is my second time there. He's supposed to be there. We're supposed to have footage. We're supposed to talk. We're supposed to talk to the prosecutor. Never saw the officer. Saw the prosecutor, didn't even say two words to him, basically. Sat in court for about an hour. And uh, in the beginning, there was a juvenile up there. And uh, he missed 15 days of school. 15. If I did that, <laughs> they'd still be looking for my body. Anyway, 15 days lost of school. The kid's going through a story. He really doesn't want to do nothing too much. He's got a little smirky attitude. His mother's there. His grandmother's there. It's understandable. Judge lays into him for about 15 minutes and trying to go over certain things with him. And, you know, it's understandable. So um, as he's getting ready to leave the court, I see him turn around and he's walking down the aisle. And he's got the, you know, the stupid smirk that kids have today when, you know, they think they got over on something. But they really didn't. They have no idea about how life actually works. And uh, I don't know. God spoke to me at that moment and said, you need to do something. So what did I do? As they were getting their stuff together in their chairs, I went out in front of the courtroom, all the way in the back. I mean, I went to the back of the courtroom, outside the doors, went and got a drink of water from the water fountain, waited for them to come out in the hallway. They come out in the hallway. First thing I did was pull that kid aside, and I was like, look, dude, I seen the smirk that you had when you turned around from the judge. That shit ain't going to play. At 15 years old, missing 15 days of school is uncalled for. I understand the story that you explained up there that you lost your father in August, and I'm sorry for that. But here's the thing. Now do you have to man up, just like the judge said. This world will chew you up and spit you out if you don't have any type of education, no type of whereabouts. The judge asked you, what did you like to do? What kind of hobbies do you have? You don't have any hobbies? You just like to sit and watch TV? That is the most poisonous thing to your mind. The other thing you like to do is probably go out and hang out with your friends all the time and basically do nothing, right? Yeah. That's what I figured. Get your ass in school, dude, because if you don't, nobody's going to take care of you. All the friends you have now, they ain't going to put a roof on your house. They ain't going to put a roof over your head. They ain't going to feed you all the time. Yeah, that's okay when you have issues and your friends help you for a few days and they see you're trying to work and things like that. But if you're going to be lazy and stupid all the time, you ain't going to go nowhere. The judge asked you if you wanted to see what the cells look like and what was going on back there and you didn't want to go. Well, let me tell you something. If you keep going down the same path that you're going, you're going to end up there. I've been your age. You ain't never been my age. I've been through more shit than you can even possibly imagine in my lifestyle on the things that I've done and who I've been and where I've been and the things that I have gone through. And I have clawed my way to the top. The top of what? My top is having a roof over my head, food to eat, my girl, a job, and living life and seeing the sunrise and the sunset and friends. That's what's important. Helping others is what's important. If you ain't going to do nothing, you ain't going to be nothing. So I let him go. Let him leave. I run outside, put more money in the meter and everything. I come back in the courtroom. Judge is finishing up with somebody. Odd thing is, is, you know, normally they call you docket number, this, that, the third, and all that other stuff. I sat down there and I waited. The only thing I heard was my name, George Kelly. That was it. That was all he said. Got up there, walked up front. I didn't even make it to the desk yet. Excuse me. Didn't even make it up to the front. As I'm walking up to the judge, the judge says, I see this was an ID issue. Case dismissed. Have a good day, Ms. Kelly. Okay. I take two steps. I turn back around and I was like, you know, Your Honor, I have to commend you on uh, what you were talking 
you know, what you were saying to that young man, 15 days of school and what he wants to do and this, that, and the third. And, uh, you know what I mean? I, I hope you actually made an impression on him because, uh, if you ask, you know, Honorable Judge Gross and mention my name, <laughs> she'll tell you that, uh, yeah, I've had a little roughness in the beginning, but yeah, here I am today doing what I must do. You know, that judge looked at me, gave me one of these and said, I know, Mr. Kelly, have a good day. And I was like, you too, Your Honor. Poo. And I was out. I don't know what happened. But as I'm walking out of the courtroom, I get into the hallway. There's three cops out there waiting for me. All three of them are like, yo, the speech you laid down on that kid is something that he desperately needed to hear. That was a great job. And I said, look, he has no idea what I grew up with. I already know what's out in the streets. And I've changed my attitude and I've changed my ways of thinking. All except for being a Democrat. I'll never change that. There's no way in hell I would do that. But anyway... <laughs> Politics aside, um, you got to try to do good things for people. And sometimes God will give you that little nudge on the side of your head to say, do something right. You got to follow it sometimes. That's what I do. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Don't kick nobody when they're down. Be a loving, kind person. Unless they come to smack your hat off your head like that, then you have, by all means... <laughs> you know what to do. But anyway, just wanted to share that little story for you with you. And uh, I got a whole bunch of other ones. Like, share, subscribe. And the thing is, is I'm going to be asking for a favor soon from everybody. And uh, I'm hoping I can pull something off the ground. But it's going to take help. And there's just things that I don't know how to do. And I'm going to need help doing it. So hopefully get your thinking caps on and somebody can help me out there sooner or later. There might even be a finder's fee if it works. Anyway, love, like, share, supply. Supply, you know what the supply is? <laughs> love and kindness to all. Unless they're on, never mind, I'm not even going to say that. <laughs> Enjoy your day, people. This has been Lunch with Hashtag GK Says. Enjoy, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.